Hey guys. Don't mind my fan in the back. This morning is for my fellow young people out there. God gave me this dream. When I got the dream, I didn't understand what it meant. But then God revealed to me, he told me the interpretation of the dream. He wants me to bring it to y'all awareness. So, And before y'all come in and be like, Ooh, look, listen here. One thing about God, if the people that's supposed to do the work that he asked them to do ain't doing it, he's going to call other people to do it. Whenever they not doing their job right, he calls other people that you ain't never seen before. Like me, for example. I had this dream on July 30th, 2024. In the dream, I was in this big classroom. I was in this huge classroom and it was dark. All the lights was off and we were all like on the floor. You know, like when you're in school, you have like these lockdowns and y'all get on the floor and they cut the lights off and lock the door. That's what was going on in the dream, but it felt different. It didn't feel like a regular lockdown. When I was in the dream, it felt like we was there for like weeks or months in that same exact classroom we were sleeping on the floors and everything i look around i see a whole bunch of kids in there a whole bunch of kids that's in there people that i went to school with there which was shocking to me so i'm looking around everybody just talking and you know they just doing their thing they just talking doing whatever i look at the door and the door it had like this super super small crack like you could barely even see the crack you had to really like focus laser focus in at the door to see the crack i saw that the door was cracked and had like a little bit of light coming in but the room was so dark that you couldn't even see the little bit of light that was coming through in that little small crack and then it was a window it was like a high window on the door and i looked at the window I saw these army looking people passing by the door, but they didn't look like average army people like that you see like the U.S. Army or something like that. They didn't look like that at all. They actually looked more advanced than any military group I've ever seen. They were wearing all black. They had breastplates like real breastplates that looked like of steel they all had the same thing on and they were walking past walking past and as they was walking past they walked past so fast like unhumanly fast they were sipping through like soup 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 past the door unhumanly fast i heard their footsteps and it sounded like they were walking regular but they wasn't walking regular when i was looking at them it just looked like they were just zooming out like a speed of lightning just soup 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 just like that they had these big weapons in their hands and the weapons did not look like nothing of this world they were very like big i can't really remember fully what the weapons looked like but they were big and they did not look nothing of this world it looked out of this world actually so i'm looking at the door and then i'm looking at everybody else and i'm like nobody sees this like nobody sees these army people zooming past the door and they were like in twos and in threes and i was scared because i'm like this door is open and i was hoping that none of them would come in and kill us that's what i was thinking in the dream and i'm looking at everybody else in the dream and they were just moving around like nothing is going on i'm like y'all don't see this it was this boy that came to me it's a boy that i knew actually I knew I had classes with, I talked to, I was friends with at a time. He came where I was at, where I was laying at. He laid right next to me. He ain't say nothing to me. He was just smiling at me. And I was like, okay, why did he come over here and not say nothing? Why is he over here? So boom, I'm looking, I'm trying to like turn my head and look around, like look around the surroundings. And he kept pushing my face. He kept turning my face back, turning my face towards him. And then I'm trying to move my body a different direction and he keep moving my body facing him. Like he kept doing it over and over and over again. So then eventually I was just like, you know what? I'm going to stop fighting him because every time I keep trying to move around, he keep moving me back. So eventually I just stopped moving and then we were just laying down on the floor just looking at each other. And then all of a sudden we heard voices. So we looked up. This might sound a little funny a little bit, but it's not. And then all of a sudden I see these cartoon characters. Cartoon characters from 
a show that I used to watch a lot, like Amazing World of Gumball. It was just the main characters, like the whole family, like the, the bunny dad, the cat mom, the cat boy, fish, bunny. The bunny dad was sitting at the desk, like the teacher's desk. He was sitting at the desk at the computer while the rest of the family were just standing around with us. And this is what they were saying. You guys still have time. You still have time to come to Jesus over and over and over again. They kept saying that. You still have time to come to Jesus. You still have time. Change from your ways. The bunny dad, Richard, he was saying, y'all have enough time because a lot of y'all are going to hell. But y'all can change that. And y'all can still go to Jesus. This is exactly what they were saying. But all the people, all the young people that was there, they looked at them and then they went back and ignored them. And they just talk, went on and talking just like how they did. Just went on about their business, talking, boom. And I'm in my head like, why aren't they listening to them? Because they are, because in the dream, I was agreeing with them because in the dream, I believed in Jesus. So I was like, why are they not listening to them? Like, they're for real. This is not a game. They kept saying this. They kept saying this. The boy that was laying near me, he kept saying, oh yeah, I know I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to be with Jesus. I know I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus. He kept saying that. It was very boastful. It was very cocky. And I kind of looked at him like, are you sure about that? Like, are you sure? But I ain't saying nothing. He went up to Richard. He said, look me up. Tell me where I'm going. I already know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. I already know that. Richard was like, okay, I'll look you up. What's your name? He told him his name. He went on the computer. He finally found his thing. And he said, no, you're not. The boy was surprised. And he was like, why? He said, because you can't be gay and love the Lord. Now, I know this is going to get some controversy, but... Just stay with me. The boy was mad and he was confused. And then um, Richard was saying, well, but you still have time to change. You still have time to turn and change from your ways. You can still go to heaven. All you got to do is just change from your ways. Just turn away. You still have time. The boy said, nah, just take me over there now. And I looked like, what? The classroom got dead silent. Richard was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, because what's the point? Uh, y'all gonna have me wait to go there when y'all could just send me there now and then richard was like okay if that's what you want then he typed in the computer all of a sudden this big portal this big portal just opened up in the middle of the classroom all the kids moved out the way it was fire coming out of it and you could feel the heat from the portal he walked over there, and while he was walking over there, all the kids was just watching him, silently watching him go to this portal. He went over there all cocky. He didn't have no fear in his eyes. In the dream, I felt bad. So I went to him, and I gave him a hug. I don't know why I gave him a hug, but I did. When I was giving him a hug, he looked mad at me. He looked angry. He started to have a smirk on his face. I'm hugging him, right? We hugging, right? Mind you, we're very near this. We're near the portal. We're super close to the portal. All of a sudden, he wouldn't let me go. He started trying to pull me in with him. As he was pulling me, my body got stiff. I wasn't moving at all. It was like my body just turned into stone for a second. As he was pulling me, the portal started like getting crazy and wild. The portal forcefully pulled him in. He let go of me and then all of a sudden I heard, ah! Then the portal just closed. After the portal closed up, everybody went on like it was normal. They acted like it didn't even happen. Like they literally moved on and carried on what they was doing talking again doing whatever they was doing all like like literally like nothing happened and i was looking i'm like y'all did not see this like this boy just went to hell and he was trying to drag me into hell so i'm like what y'all really moving like none of this stuff happened then the characters they went back and they were saying again like y'all still have time y'all still have time to change and go to jesus see hell is a real place Y'all still have time to go to Jesus. They still were saying this stuff. I went back to the spot that I was laying at. I was standing there in deep thought in a dream. And I had this very sunken feeling just like. And I kept thinking in my head like, am I going to hell? I don't want to go to hell. I'm scared. Am I going? Why everybody just carrying on? Oh yeah, my fault. I missed a part. While the characters were saying that, 
They literally ignored them like they wasn't even there. And then after that, the dream ended. I woke up. I asked God. I said, God, can you tell me what this dream means? Because I don't understand it. He definitely gave me the interpretation of the dream. I have it all written down in my notebook. And so this is exactly what he says. The classroom represents the time people have here. That's why when you were in the dream, it felt like you've been in that room for a long time. And the soldiers that you saw represent what is to come, that everything is set in motion and all the things written in scripture will come to pass. And the cartoon characters represent how people take me, my people, my word, heaven and hell they don't take it seriously they either think all of it is not real or it's not as serious as my people are taking it i asked him i said why was he around me a lot he said well that means that some people think if they just stay around a person that is deeply rooted in the faith then they feel like they're covered just by that alone which is not the case at all so this is why when he was going to hell, he tried to pull you in because he thought that his faith was atoned for through you. So he was trying to take you with him because he felt like it was your fault he went. Oh, wow. So then I asked the Lord and I said, what does the statement that Richard said when he said, can't be gay and go to heaven? He said that statement was a representation of how everyone thinks they can live in sin and still love me or believe in me when believing in me is not enough. People can't just willfully live in sin and think they are going to be with me. I asked him, so why did the boy just say he wanted to go to hell after after Richard told him he had time to change? And he said that just shows how people will choose hell over me because they don't want to repent and change their ways. So they feel like hell is the better option, all because they are deeply rooted in their sin and comfortable with it. They also think hell isn't that bad. Some think it's a party and some think they can handle it. That's why you saw no fear in his eyes. So then I asked about the people. So why did the people just carry on like it was normal after they just seen him going to hell and he said that shows that people see these things but never take heed to them that's why after he went in and the portal disappeared they went back to what they were doing and ultimately forgetting about it so then i asked them about the characters why was they not listening to the characters after you know the portal closed up and they went back to what they were doing he said that just showed that people will ignore all the ones that are warning them until it's too late. I asked him, why was I having these thoughts? Like, am I going to hell? Like, what? Oh, he told me that just represents that not everyone is ignoring me and know that this is not a game. And then I asked him about the boy kept moving my face and my body. And this is what he said. This is a representation of people trying to distract you of what's really happening because they see the signs as much as my people do of my return. And then I asked him, I was like, who? What people are you talking about? The people that are under Satan. And then I asked him, I said, Lord, why was all the people that was there young people? And he said, because the majority of young people are going to hell. That was it. He answered literally all of my confusion questions i had that dream july 30th 2024 so today is august 2nd 2024 and i asked the lord is there anything that you want to say before i make this video this is his message for y'all nothing can save you that money can't save you those crystals can't save you that witchcraft can't save you those celebrity idols your influence on the internet, your sexual immorality, the substances, the drinks, all these things you run to cannot save you but the true and living God. Don't let these things of your youth lead you to eternal death. This is my warning to you to repent and turn from your ways of living and come to me and I will give you peace and rest and joy. The things that you're trying to find in the world 
but you will never find it but through me and my son Jesus Christ. If you don't take heed to my warning, then you will reap the final judgment that I give to you, and it cannot be reversed. I am coming soon. Repent and come to me while you still can because your time is running out. So this is God's warning, y'all. He's not playing. I really advise y'all to repent. I strongly advise test the spirit, but this is coming from the source. Whether you want to believe it or not. We have little time on this earth. He is coming back. And if you are not prepared. Whoever this reaches. Any young person that this reaches. Please take heed to this warning. This is serious. He's not playing. He's for real. Don't wait till it's too late. Please. You still have time. The time that you have here on this earth. Is all the grace and all the mercy. And all the forgiveness. That God has given you. Please take advantage of it because when you take your last breath, all that grace, mercy, forgiveness is gone. And then you're going to be standing before God. And what can you say to God? He going to ask you, what have you done? If it's just, I wanted to get closer to you, but then I had this and I got into this and I got into that. Nothing you will say will be a valid excuse on that day. Look, I did my part. The Lord sent me. I'm just a messenger. I'm just doing the work of God, doing what he told me to do. He told me to put this message out, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Whatever you do with this information, it's on you. The ball is in your court now, so now it's on you. If you guys don't heed to his warning, y'all going to be just like Cain. After he murdered his brother Abel, and God gave him his punishment, and he said this in Genesis 4, 13. Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to bear. That's going to be a lot of y'all if y'all don't heed to this warning. Just repent. Ask for forgiveness and turn to God. Turn to Jesus. He's going to be the only one that's going to help you. Nothing in this world is going to help you. Everything in this world is against you. Even people. But everything, everybody, they all against you. The only one that's not against you is Jesus. But y'all keep denying them every time. Yeah, y'all. I'll see y'all later. Stay walking on that narrow path.